a mother in the Gulf War who said, When do I teach my children Arabic? My boy is two and a half years old. When do I begin to teach him Arabic grammar and Quran and to read the memorization? Because I want him to be raised with the Quran. What a beautiful concern you have with your child that you want him to learn the Quran. But he's three years old. Chill out, lady. We want them to have every... What were you doing when you were three years old? You don't remember. You don't remember. You don't even remember like... You should put your shoes on the wrong way. Kids are on the fitrah. They are beautiful. Let them be. Teach them. Yes, teach them lovingly. Some kids have more aptitude. They want to learn quickly. They want to learn quickly. And you give them that opportunity. Some kids want to play more. Let them play more. Let them take their time. Parents have to learn to be flexible with their children and not impose the same standards and not make one kid compare to the other kid, especially in terms of their Qur'an. I have six kids. Not all of them memorize Qur'an the same way. Not all of them study Qur'an the same way. Not at all. I have one child who memorizes something in like five minutes. She can memorize it. This is ridiculous. She's so fast at memorizing. It's amazing. I have another who can... The same thing could take her a month. And I don't compare... Hey, why don't you be more like your sister? Huh? I don't do that. That's zulm. This is zulm. And it creates a hatred towards deen. Because of this book, my, my, my father likes my other sister more than me. That's wrong, man. Stop it. Cut it out. Stop being so stressed over your kids. What, uh, Allah doesn't want your kid to be a hafiz. Allah doesn't want your kid to be a alim. Allah wants your kid to be a good Muslim. Allah, Allah wants you to, your child to love his or, his or her deen. That's what Allah wants. So chill out. The other, on that children's note, there are some people who came to me and said, you know, our children are five, six years old. We, were, we watched, we show them videos of the signs of Judgment Day, and we talk about the jal. I was like, why do you do that? Why are you talking to your kids about the jal? Your kids are like five years old. That's traumatizing, dude. I get scared reading about the jal. How are you going to tell the child about the jal? Listen, children are all the fitra. They are on the fitra. You know what that means? That right now, they are not responsible for any wrong that they do. Why do you want to put the fear of Allah in them when they don't have to have the fear of Allah in them? They don't. Fear of Allah is for someone who will be held responsible for their deeds. Yes or no? Right now is the age to expose them to the love of Allah, the mercy of Allah, the care of Allah, the gifts of Allah. That's the love of the Prophet Nothing about the fear, nothing about Jahannam, nothing about Yawm Al-Qiyamah, nothing about Dajjal, nothing about great wars and collapse. No, no, hold on a second. This is not what kids need. It will traumatize them. They'll think of their deen in such scary terms. Children get terrified. And you don't, don't tell me. I oh, know we tell them some positive things too. <laughs> it's, like, it's not how it works. You can't show a kid a horror movie and then say, well, we showed him a teddy bear after that, so things should work out. No, you don't do that. You just don't do that. It's so, so damaging for children. You know? In the beginning, we want to nurture that fitrah. They already came with the love of Allah. That's what Allah put inside of them. Nurture that love and don't replace it with fear. Fear will come later. When they get mature, when they get older, then we start talking about responsibility, accountability. Then you talk, teach about judgment day. Then you teach those when they're at that age. Teaching that ahead of time just takes it, takes it all away. Same thing with teaching Quran, same thing with teaching anything to your children for that matter. Make things age appropriate and make things lovable. The biggest accomplishment in our days, day and age, Wallahi, please listen to this carefully. The biggest accomplishment in our day and age with our children is not how much they will learn. How much they will learn means nothing. It, I'm, so, I'm sorry that sounds offensive to you. It means nothing. What will mean something? How much do they love their Rabb? How much do they love their Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? How much do? How much character do they uphold? How truthful and honest are they? You know, how, when, how, are they, how easy is it for them to admit a mistake? How openly do they communicate with you? Their character is the most important thing, not their knowledge. Knowledge is superficial, it is for show to others. I'm not saying knowledge isn't important, but knowledge will always be secondary to character. Always, always will be secondary to character. Right now it's about nurturing that character, nurturing that personality, and a little bit of knowledge along the way. There are plenty of children who memorize the entire Qur'an at a very early age with no character. They're not, they, and it's not those kids' fault. The only thing emphasized to them was memorizing Qur'an. And these kids will lie, these kids are mean, they make fun of their friends who don't memorize Qur'an with them as quickly. All the things you're not supposed to do as a Muslim, they do, but they're hufad of Qur'an. So they're trophies of our community. Come on, what have we done? We emphasize things that Allah doesn't emphasize, and we overlook things that Allah emphasizes. And yet we say we're, you know, we're serving the deen. 
we again have to restore balance. Knowledge has its place, character has its place, and that balance between the two has to be struck.